Welcome back to the American College of Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the front lines of Surgeons Voices. With me today is Dr. Herb Chen, who's the Chair of Surgery at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, uh, and a counselor for the American Board of Surgery. At the American Board of Surgery, he also serves as Chair of the Research Committee. Welcome, Dr. Chen. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm delighted that you could be with us. What I'd like to focus on amongst your various duties uh, is, is a study that you recently presented at the American Surgical Association in your role as the chair of the research committee for the American Board of Surgery, where you looked at the responses and results from the virtual examination. So if you could review the background of that study with us as a starting point, that would be wonderful. Sure, I'd be glad to. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that this study was done by the entire research committee of the American Board of Surgery, and I had the honor to present the work of the entire committee. But what we did is, as you know, during the COVID outbreak, the American Board of Surgery certifying examination, or what people commonly refer to as the oral boards, had to be rescheduled. And the American Board of Surgery had to scramble to decide how we would give these exams and due to the hard work of Joe Beiske and her staff were, was able to come up with a virtual format uh, to conduct these examinations. So the board conducted two pilot examinations to make sure that the process would work and then in October of 2020 conducted the first large-scale remote virtual exam using the Zoom platform. And I was fortunate to uh, participate in one of the pilots and also in the uh, virtual examination. And so the goal of this study was to look back to see the results of this virtual examination comparing to the results of the traditional exam given in person the previous year to see if there were any differences in the pass rate and then to also get some information from both the examinees and the examiners with regarding their experience in the virtual platform and comparing it to, um, uh, at least for the reviewers, uh, um, they have gone uh, done both, uh, comparing their experience giving the exam in person versus virtually. Excellent. And I think a lot of our viewers and listeners have background on the American Board of Surgery. Um, even those individuals not in the U.S. Uh, who've not sat for the various examinations of the American Board of Surgery, as we've spoken with Joe Beisky on two prior occasions about the examination uh, process. So um, I think people have an understanding of, of what the board tried to do, but of course, most people are American surgical, they don't know what actually happened. So maybe you could review with us uh, what you found. Sure, I uh, found uh, in this particular study, what was so interesting is that I guess the results were, first of all, let's talk about the um, results of the exam. And then I think what's very interesting is the um, interpretation of, or the preference for exams of both the exam and these examiners. But so we had 308 candidates register for that virtual exam. And of those 306 or 99.4% were able to complete the virtual exam as scheduled. Uh, two, due to technical reasons, had to be rescheduled for a later uh, administration. So that, first of all, is remarkable that uh, so many, a high percent, were able to complete the exam without uh, major glitches. Of the people who took the exam, virtually, of the 306, 246 were what we call first-time candidates. It was the first time they took the exam, whereas 60 were repeat candidates. And what we did is we compared these results of those 306 to the 1,025 candidates who had taken the in-person exam during the pre-COVID era. And um, what we found is the pass rates for the virtual exam were not significantly different than those from the in-person exam. And just on average, the pass rate of all examinees for the virtual was about 82% versus 85% in person. And then we looked at those who were taking the exam the first time versus the repeat and again, found no statistical difference in the pass rate between virtual versus in-person. 
Interesting. Um, now, the structure of the examination uh, has traditionally been three rooms, two examiners per room, and half hour for questions using the case book and half hour for discussion. Is the format the same? Basically, yes. But obviously, in the virtual format, we're not, um, we don't have the candidates moving uh, from room to room. So, as probably you and I both did, is uh, we remember going to Philadelphia or you know when the other cities getting in a hotel room and then when our exam we had to shuffle from hotel room to hotel room taking stairs sometimes up and down and running between uh, three rooms which each were 30 minutes and sometimes you know sweating afterwards and trying to calm down when you get in the room so uh, in this platform I think the ease of moving around was um, much easier because the examinee basically was put into a conference room with a proctor. And what happened is the examiners were moved from room to room virtually. Now, obviously we weren't, we were sit sitting in our offices doing it, but um, uh, the candidate and proctor had stayed still. And then a, a coordinator moved the examiners to the different candidates. And it was basically the same format. There were two examiners and one examinee with a proctor. We used the same case book to examine them. And then again, the, the candidates had four scenarios presented to them in each room by the two examiners who also uh, gave the exam in the same way, alternating with the questions and then also graded them with the same format. Great. And then tell us a little bit about the proctor, because in, in the uh, hotel room setting, as, as it were, um, the whether it's the American Board of Surgery, American Board of Colon Rectal Surgery, will often have one of the senior people check in in rooms from time to time and explain to the candidate, you know, you don't have three examiners, but somebody's checking out the exam process. Now, in this instance, you, you have a proctor who's there the entire time. Is it the same proctor for all three rooms? Do the proctors change and, and what are the logistics of the proctor? So the proctor stays with the candidate. So the role of the proctor is, is that they help um, when the candidate logs on early, the proctor um, makes sure the room is in the line is secure, basically checks the candidate's uh, environment, making sure the video, everything works. And then also uh, has a role to make sure that the candidate doesn't have any materials um, with them in the room. So they'll take a quick scan of the room, make sure they silence their cell phone and all those things, um, prepare them for the exam. And then the proctor uh, is with the examinee with their screen off, so sort of listening in the background as they're going through the exam. And I think that this is this feature I think is a particularly um, strong advantage for the virtual format because obviously when we we're in person, we didn't have a proctor in every room, but this allows the, the candidate to, to actually have someone in the room witnessing the exam so that if there's any questions about the conduct of the exam, there is a third party who um, can validate what's happening. Furthermore, there's a video now recording of the exam so it does give the ability for the candidate to basically, if they have any concerns about how the question was asked or if they got the question wrong or not, there's a way to review that now. Yeah, th those are some interesting potential advantages because you're right, the, the fourth person in the room, the proctor as it were, from, from uh, the, the board would not be, there weren't enough people to have somebody in every room all the time. So it'd be sporadic, you know, it might be on your first session in one room and third session somewhere else. That seems a, uh, a very interesting concept. So a, a lot of work went into it. Now I think we understand the logistics. Uh, what was the response? How did the examiners feel? How did the candidates feel? So what we did is we surveyed all the candidates who took the examination virtually and all the examiners. And we asked a whole bunch of questions regarding their experience with check-in, security, um, the break, you know, everything about the schedule, how it worked, and the video quality, the Zoom, and everything was pretty highly rated, um, meaning that um, we used a scale of 
very favorable as five and not favorable as one. And almost all the ratings were fours and fives, which was, you know, I think a testament to the pilot work that was done and the um, really hard work of the staff of the board to make sure that this, we could give a really, really high quality exam that both examiners and examinees would be comfortable with. That, that's great. So the, the candidates were strongly uh, supportive of, of, of what occurred and, and had very positive experiences. Uh, did you ask the candidates if they would prefer in the future to have that format? Was that question asked or, or whether they'd prefer in person? Yeah, so that's interesting. So when we look at so sort of the overall satisfaction, when we rate everything, the uh, with the exam process, both examiners and examinees rated at high overall satisfaction with examiners uh, giving 97%, uh, you know, either four or five um, uh, satisfaction and examinees 90%, so pretty high. But interestingly, when you ask them, do you prefer this format versus the in-person, examinees by far prefer the remote. Um, 78% said, I like the remote. And when we got into some of the details, why, of course, um, logical things, no travel, so saving the cost, get to sleep in your own bed, um, get to take the exam in your own comfortable chair, so all these um, in the environment you're familiar with. But the examiners were sort of the other way that uh, almost 79% of the examiners preferred the in-person. And um, just to be quite honest, that's not what I voted. I voted for the, um, I preferred the uh, virtual. But some of the reasons that examiners liked the in-person is a little bit about the camaraderie of getting together with examiners uh, to give the exam, the ability to meet people, the uh, and some of the um, the experience, you know, being on the board is a fantastic experience because you meet, you know, so many talented surgeons from all over the country who you become friends with because you spend a lot of time with and who are all committed to the mission of unifying surgery, which is the uh, mission of the board. So I think that sort of camaraderie, and remember we're doing the survey, you know, in the middle of COVID when all of us have not had those interactions, right? And so I, I think uh, that is a little measure of people starving for that social interaction that we all love to have and that surgeons in, you know, are very social people, I think. And yeah. I think that survey just reflects that. Fascinating. So if you're at liberty to say so, what do you think is the future direction for the certifying examination? When this study first came out, I think that everyone, when we looked at the results said, well, this looks like this is the way we should do it. And obviously more examinations now have been uh, conducted. Uh, I think now over a thousand people have had virtual exams. And as we've gotten, and we hope to dig into some of the more data that we've gathered from that, but I think the initial results look like, again, overwhelmingly a high satisfaction with the exam. And now more examiners actually coming to the side, well, maybe this isn't so bad, not having to uh, travel so much. Um, and so I think Joe Beisky, when she actually answered the questions during our presentation, we really believe that this is going to be the way of the future is that virtual exams are the way that um, I think all the exams are going to be conducted, definitely for this next year for sure. But I think as the overall, we're just getting better and better at doing these exams. And for the many advantages that we've already discussed on this call, yeah. I think everyone's going to be in favor of maintaining uh, this format. Well, thanks so much for your insights and for sharing the results of the study uh, with us. I, I, I think it, it, it's a great study, fascinating results, you know, perhaps intuitive uh, that, that for the reasons you enumerated, one gets to stay home in you know, one's favorite chair, sleep in your own bed, go out to your favorite restaurant when you're done, whatever it happens to be, assuming dining is allowed wherever you happen to be at <laughs> taking your exam. Uh, and I guess for the board, the camaraderie is still going to exist when you're getting together to review uh, uh, 
uh, to do retreats and things like that. But, uh, you know, I mean, that, that can still be done, um, but it is an interesting result. Um, any other comments before we close? Well, I think that the, the board is obviously very interested in getting feedback from uh, its diplomats. So I, I would encourage anyone that's watching to provide feedback to us because our, we want to hear from surgeons. And I do think uh, we are going to continue to make sure that this exam is what um, is best for everyone. And so I imagine our committee, research committee will dig into the data now that we've examined over a thousand and just to make sure that we have these consistent trends of equivalent pass rates and that um, the, we'll look at to see if there's any, um, is there any bias in the exam now that we have more N in the study? And I don't really think there is, but of course you just wanna make sure that the, this format doesn't disadvantage anyone. Thanks so much. I, again, I really appreciate your time today uh, and your reflections about your study uh, and look forward to seeing you again uh, in person, I hope, next time. Sounds good. Thanks so much for letting me spend some time with you.